I tested every beginner camera to find the best ones, and I realized the perfect beginner camera for one person might be completely different for someone else. Because what really matters as a beginner is your shooting style and what you're shooting. And if you don't know the specific features and specs to look for as a beginner, you might pick up a great camera that is simply a terrible fit for you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the perfect beginner camera for you with the right features for every kind of beginner and every budget level. So most people tend to focus on the wrong specs for their beginner camera and often ignore the most important thing. Because when you're starting out, you want your camera to be as simple and easy to operate so you can focus on creativity and less on the technical hassle, which is why the ZV-E10 might be the best camera for that exact reason. Also, I'm gonna leave links in the description down below for the best pricing on all the camera gear we talk about today. The ZV-10 has a really small and compact body that you can pretty much take anywhere with you, but the button layout of the ZV-10 is ultra minimal. It has one simple button at the top for photo, video, and slow motion, no confusing mode dial, and two separate record buttons for photo and video. Plus, it also has a side articulating screen for vlogging and self-recording. Plus, it has an amazing built-in microphone that delivers extremely crisp audio. You almost don't need to get an external microphone. And it has a button right at the top for defocus mode, which enhances the blurry background effect in all of your photos and videos, which again, takes all the technical hassle out of getting great photos and videos and makes everything easy for you. And the Sony ZV-10 does connect to your phone via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so you can easily transfer your photos. And a great accessory to pick up with your Sony ZV-10 is the Bluetooth vlogging handle. It's super useful because you can use it as a vlogging handle, but also a tripod and a wireless remote. If you're someone that's a content creator or a vlogger, this is a great accessory to pick up. But one thing to note is that the ZV-10 does not have an electronic viewfinder, which is the eyepiece for when you're taking photos, and it doesn't have a built-in flash. The way this camera is built, a lot of you guys probably won't need them, and I'll explain why. Inside the ZV-10, you'll find a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is pretty much the standard sensor size and resolution for most digital cameras. But because of the pixel design of the sensor, the ZV-10 is amazing in low light and you can shoot at really high ISOs with very little noise. I've gotten clean results up to 10,000 and 15,000 ISOs. Oh, and the autofocusing system is blazing fast. Sony cameras always have really good autofocus. Although the ZV-10 does have Sony's older color science, so some of you guys may not love the colors right in camera, but I do have a solution for you. Because in photo mode, it shoots 10 frames per second in 14-bit RAW, which gives you an insane amount of dynamic range and color flexibility when it comes to editing your photos. And if you don't love the colors, it's easy to just tweak them on your phone or laptop. And and because of that super fast 10 frames per second, you can shoot anything you want with this camera from slow sit-down portraits to high-speed action. But video is probably why most of you guys want to pick up this camera because there's some features in this camera for video that make it almost as good as a pro camera, but it does make it easier to get better results as a beginner. Because when it comes to video, it shoots in 4K, but not regular 4K. It's super sampled from a 6K image area. In simple terms, it means you get 4K with the detail and clarity of 6K. And it shoots this at 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, which is real-time video, kind of like this. And it's perfect for vlogging, travel, sit-down videos like this, pretty much your standard video format. But if you're like me and you love slow motion, it also shoots full HD at 60 frames per second and 100 120 frames per second for buttery smooth slow motion. But there's one feature in the ZV-10 that makes it better than every beginner camera in this category. As a beginner, most people get pretty good pretty fast, but once they get to a certain level, they usually really need to upgrade their camera. The ZV-10 not only has 14-bit RAW for advanced photo editing, but it also has cinematic color profiles like S-Log3 that allow you to push your colors in video editing way beyond any beginner camera. So when you get to a certain level with your skill and you really feel like you need to upgrade, thanks to those cinema profiles and 14-bit RAW, 
you can hold on to this camera for a long time and grow with it. However, the ZV-10 only has 8-bit color and for the most amount of flexibility, you should consider the 10-bit camera later in this list, which is especially ideal if you don't love the Sony cameras and you really plan on heavily editing your video. So the ZV-10 is ultimately a straightforward and simple and easy to use beginner camera, but because it has quite a bit of technical horsepower, it's also a camera you can keep for the long term and grow with. And for you guys, we have the brand new Canon R50. This camera was designed from the ground up specifically for beginners and people that are just entering the photo and video landscape. It's a bit beefier of a camera, but it's still small enough as an everyday carry. However, two big bonuses is that it does have a flash for photos and a viewfinder for photography. Right at the top of the camera, you have a mode dial with multiple automatic shooting modes like sports, nighttime, food, simply making it much, much easier to set your camera up in an instant for exactly what you want to shoot. But it has one mode on this camera that is unlike anything I have ever seen in a camera. It has a mode known as Automatic Plus that uses computational photography just like your smartphone where it takes multiple photos at once and combines all of them into an enhanced photo with the best colors, the best lighting, the best shadows, everything is just dialed in for you. And it also has creative assist mode that can add a creative filter right on top of your photo. Again, this will not look as good as actually editing your photos and learning to edit. I recommend doing that, but it's a really easy way to get an interesting looking photo right in camera with very little hassle. These modes are really useful for someone who's not trying to be a photographer or a video shooter, maybe you're a chef or a designer, and you simply just wanna make pretty content and get it on the internet. And design-wise, it has pretty much everything you would expect from a camera like this, like a side articulating screen, easy button layout, it's really easy to operate, and it does have a slightly deeper grip but it's still pretty small compared to a proper camera. And you can also buy a separate vlogging handle for the Canon R50 that also works as a tripod, a detachable wireless remote, and you can also connect it to your phone so you can easily transfer your photos from your camera to your phone. Inside the R50 is where the real magic happens. Inside the R50, you'll find a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is standard, However, it does a few awesome things in how it processes the photos and videos that make the R50 really special. Off the bat, you'll notice these beautiful Canon colors, which Canon is actually really known for. Everything in this camera has a very true to life yet warm feel and everything almost already kind of looks edited. The colors alone are enough of a reason to pick up the R50 or any Canon camera. And the autofocus is insanely fast. This way you can just focus on making content and less on the technical stuff. Plus it also has subject detect for animals, people, and vehicles that works super well. When it comes to photos, it can shoot as high as 12 frames per second or 15 frames per second in 14-bit RAW, but the R50 also has something known as HEIF photos. This is kind of like a pro version of a JPEG photo because it has 10-bit color and it gives you a lot more flexibility than regular JPEGs. It's good for someone that doesn't really need the power of RAW, but still wants to do a little bit of editing to your photos, and you'd want to save a little bit of hard drive space and card space. But let's talk about the most impressive feature on the R50, which is video, and man, the video is insane. It shoots 4K that is super sampled from 6K, so you really get the detail and clarity of 6K, but in 4K video. But it also has 10-bit color, which is currently the gold standard for colors in mirrorless cameras. And a really cool update in the Canon R50 is that it no longer has a 30-minute record limit. You can record as high as an hour with this camera. And Canon didn't forget about slow motion. The R50 also does full HD at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second for buttery smooth slow motion. Sadly, there is no 4K at 60 frames per second or cinematic color profiles. However, there is an HDR video mode which gives you a little bit more dynamic range and with 10-bit color, you should be just fine when it comes to editing your video colors. But if 4K60 is something that you feel you definitely need, I would also recommend checking out the big brother to the Canon R50, which is the Canon R10. It's pretty much the exact same camera, but it has 4K60. However, that 4K60 does come with a 1.6 times crop, which zooms into your sensor, 
but it's pretty much the cheapest camera you can get with 4K60. The Canon R50 is currently my favorite cameras for beginners and creators, mainly because of that automatic plus mode and how easy this camera is to use. And because there's so much horsepower, this is a camera that you can pick up as a beginner and keep growing with as your skills with photo and video get better. And if you're someone that's not really a photographer or a videographer, you're simply going to get a powerhouse of a camera to make whatever kind of content you want. Most beginners, when they're starting out, they're usually only shooting photos and they're also on a very tight budget. What if I told you there's a camera out there that gives you an incredible photo experience on a budget and this is also the world's best-selling DSLR. For you guys, I have the Canon T7. And the Canon T7 is special for more than just its affordable price point, and you'll see why. The Canon T7 has an old-school DSLR-style body, which has a solid build quality with great ergonomics. And just like the Canon R50, it has a mode dial right at the top with specific shooting modes like food, portraits, nighttime, so you can set this camera up for exactly what you need in just a click. But one thing to note is that it does not have an input for an external mic and it does not have an articulating screen. The screen on the back is fixed, but the Canon T7 can still connect to your phone to transfer photos via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The Canon T7 is really a camera that focuses mainly on photos and video is more of an afterthought. The Canon T7 is an amazing photo camera because despite being a budget model, it still has a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is similar to the ZV-10 and the R50. So you're still getting that same resolution. And in photo mode, it shoots three frames per second, but in 14-bit RAW. So you can still edit the Canon T7 photos just like the more expensive cameras on this list. However, with three frames per second, this camera is really better suited for sit-down portraits, landscapes, lifestyle. It's really not meant as an action camera but it still has those phenomenal Canon colors where everything looks good right in camera. Plus, it has the Canon EF mount, which makes it really easy to pick up really affordable, professional-looking lenses without breaking the bank. I recommend checking out the Sigma lenses and also the older Canon EF line of lenses. Because they're older lenses, you're going to get top quality for a lot less money. The Canon T7 does shoot video. However, autofocus in video is really not the best and it doesn't have tracking autofocus while you're recording. However, the T7 does shoot full HD at 24 and 30 frames per second, and for slow motion, you have to go down to 720p, which is half the resolution of full HD for 60 frames per second. It's really not a camera I recommend for video unless you're just getting quick clips here and there. The main appeal of the Canon T7 is you get pretty much the same quality of photos you would get with a more expensive camera, but at a much lower price. And you still get access to the Canon EF mount, which allows you to get better lenses at a much more affordable price point. And if you want the best pricing on all the camera gear we talked about today, make sure to check out the links in the description down below, and I will see you in the next video.